Welcome to the Jazz Funeral School podcast, where we have one mission, that is to help as many interested people around the world learn and improve at jazz piano by providing structured and organized jazz piano education. I'm your host, as always, Brendan Lowe, and thank you so much for joining me. So for all the YouTube watchers out there, again, I apologize for the long intro, but we had a contest going on last week, and today, uh, as you're watching this, is the last day for the contest. So you should have seen the winners of the contest in the video, right, in the beginning of the video. So what I'd like us to do, or like those winners to do, is email us at info at jazzpianoschool.com, uh, and we will kind of set you up with the prizes. Now, again, for everyone who entered the contest and is watching this, I would love for you to, I, I still want to give away stuff, because I really, again, I'm so thankful for everyone who uh, contributed, who left a review, um, all the YouTube watchers out there who left a review, thank you so much, I can't you know, honestly, I was like overwhelmed. Like we, we received like 30 reviews. I mean, it was amazing. So thank you so much to all those people out there. I want to give away a free month to jazz piano school, uh, to all the materials. Um, you'll get access to everything for one free month. Um, again, there's no, no catches or anything like that. You don't need to input your credit card or anything like that. It's going to be completely free. Okay. You can just use jazzpianoschool.com. I'm also going to give away our solo piano essentials, uh, mini course or upgrade formula as well. That's going to be life. Okay. You can own that for life and use the materials in there for as long as you want. So everyone who left a review, please email info at jazzpianoschool.com. Uh, just copy and paste your review, um, and hopefully use an email address that matches, um, your username, right. As well. You'll have a week to collect your prize. Up until next Friday, we will not be giving away the prizes anymore, obviously. So if people like hear this and they're like, hey, I left this review, uh, you only have a week to collect, okay? If we get duplicate um, entries from two different emails, right, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to give out that um, address, okay? So um, I know it's kind of unfair, but, uh, you know, there are some people who will try and take advantage of the system. Um, and obviously, if we can kind of spot the uh, scammer <laughs> amongst the two emails, then we will. Um, we might email back both of you guys as well to kind of uh, ask you some questions, kind of get down to the bottom of things. So I would just urge the people trying to think about using the system to get uh, you know, a month free to jazz piano school, probably not the best idea. Okay. Cause we'll, we'll definitely be able to sniff you out and then that won't be good for anybody. So <laughs> thank you for everyone who left your review. I really appreciate it. And, uh, again, uh, this episode in one Oh one, well, sorry, I had one more thing. We're going to be launching the lab very soon. The lab is going to be, uh, again, small upgrade formulas that it can be used to upgrade specific parts of your jazz piano playing. Okay. If you want more information about that, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash lab launch. Okay. Uh, that will put your uh, email address on just a single, uh, list promotional email address that will, you'll receive more information about the discounts and the options. Okay. For the lab, you don't have to sign up for anything. You'll just get the options and that will give you the choice to decide whether you want to, uh, you know, join the lab or not. It's going to be fantastic. I mean, I, I can't, I can't lie. I gotta be honest here. It's going to be gig. We're going to have gig analysis from some of our staff that's live in New York, um, playing high profile gigs at Lincoln center and stuff like that. Um, doing analysis on what they're playing, what they're thinking. Um, you know, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. So besides uh, obviously all the upgrade formulas, I'm just really, I'm really excited for that because it's going to complement our main course curriculum that can now be found at, you know, that's found currently at jazzpianoschool.com. That's going to complement that very well, right? The main course is going to be the structured uh, kind of journey, you know, step-by-step -step journey with a curriculum that you can follow completely. The lab is going to be more of a pick and pull, uh, you know, upgrade formula. If you want to instantly kind of just upgrade your comping or your voicings or your improv, right, over sharp 11 chords, right, or major 7 sharp 5 chords, right, you can kind of find that upgrade formula in there, use it, and, and just, you know, boom, you know, you're going to have all the information for that specific thing. Whereas people kind of want to overall get better at jazz piano, that's what the main curriculum is going to be for because we have three levels in there, main, beginner intermediate and advanced. And again, it's like 600 videos. So it's just a massive journey of jazz piano. All right. So that's it. <laughs> Let's dive right into this rhythmic comping harmonic episode. Here we go with our first rhythmic comping change. When we start to comp, right? A lot of people will think of rhythms and comping, right? So ooh, let me turn that down a little bit. So different rhythms that you'll use in comping, right? Now, I want to break it down just a little bit further. And again, this, this 
episode, this kind of material is actually taken straight from one of the upgrade formulas in the lab. It's actually one of the steps in our overall blues, total blues comping foundation plan for all levels. And in, I'm talking about focusing in on harmonic change comping. So what does that mean exactly? It's when the, the chord change changes, right? So we don't need to necessarily focus on everything that's involving in the measure that kind of racks or rattles our brain, right? But if we just focus on the rhythms that are involved when the change happens, right? So if I play an F7 going to a B flat seven, right? What rhythms am I gonna use to reflect the harmonic change or movement? So I'm gonna talk about them. Now there's four that I'm gonna talk about today. Very easy, right? This is gonna be an easy episode to think about, but it's also kind of mentally, you can start to approach or attack your rhythmic comping plan in all tunes. I'm just using a blues as an example um, because it's from the upgrade formula, but in all tunes, thinking about what rhythms you're playing as you change, right? As you change your chord. And it's a really good strategy and approach because it's really gonna focus your rhythmic comping. And that's the most important part, moving from my F to my B flat seven, maybe to my B diminished, to my C minor. Those are the most important parts. And I think people get really kind of overwhelmed with, oh, I gotta play all these different rhythms in the measure. Like, no, not really. So here's the first harmonic change that I love to use. is the four, beat four, and beat one. Super simple, right? But it actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, but it sounds so good. So we play on beat one. So one, two, three, four, one. Right, that's it. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, now I'm adding some textures in, a little bit of a slide. Right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now, can you use these back to back? I wouldn't recommend it. Right? So I can't just keep using four to one, that rhythmic approach throughout the entire blues. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two. It's gonna sound silly, right? So we need to put variety in, but there's still great harmonic rhythmic changes. We just once I go through them, you can mix and match these and it'll, it'll sound really good, okay? So that's the first one. Now, the, the other great thing about this first one is if we add a reharm, okay, movement into our comping, it's gonna sound that much better. So if I go one, two, three, four, one. Now, what did I do there? I went to a B7, just the tritone of F. So I, instead of playing the F again, I used motion from the tritone of F. The tritone of F7 is going to be our B7 chord, B7, right? So essentially I'm playing the same chord again. I'm just creating movement because we have a different bass note now, right? A different harmony. One, two, three, four, one, right? Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, right? So D flat, C minor. Okay, and then wherever you're off to. Okay, so that's the four to one comping rhythm. Again, works really great if you place a tritone or some sort of harmonic rhythm uh, leading up to the next chord. So I could also go one, two, three, four, like A7 into my B flat seven. That sounds super cool. I got A7 altered. One, two, three, four, one, something like that, right? Now, number two is going to be three and then the and of four. Okay, so one, two, three, and four, and. So we have another, we have we play the same chord on beat three that we started with. One, two, three, and four, and. And then we change on the and of four, right? We're always changing the chord right around beat four or, you know, before beat one, on beat one, or the and of one, which you'll see again, too. Okay, so that's three and four, and. That's a really nice one, too, and we can add the tritone in there if we want as well. One, two, three, and four, and. I love that. One, two, three, and four, and. Right? It's so, it's, I mean, that, that one specifically is great as well. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one. Now you see how I combined number one and number two, and it sounds fantastic. It sounds amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's adding so much more depth into your rhythmic comping plan. So here's number two and I'm gonna combine it with number one. So number two again is three and four and, number one is four, one. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one. So again, what did I do there? I just took a uh, tritone of C7, and because C, you know, resolves back to F, okay? So I went F sharp, one. So four, one. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one. So I'm combining now. That's what I want you to do as well. By the way, there's no practice materials for this just because there's a few short rhythms here that I'm going to go over quickly. Uh, so just practice these rhythms on your own. Practice the comping rhythms throughout blueses, throughout all tunes as well. And again, we're, we're specifying our practice and our targeted rhythms into the harmonic changes. So just when the changes are happening, okay? Again, if you have two full measures of just one chord, right? That's, you know, we're not, that's not what we're working on right now, okay? So number three is just going to be the and of four. One, two, and three, and four, and. So just anticipating, right? We're anticipating the next chord. One, two, three, and four, and. Again, these can be short or long, by the way. I just kind of thought about that. So uh, most of these can be short or long. One, two, three, four, one. But again, especially with short and long, you kind of want to think about that's a whole nother podcast, actually, long and short comps. You need a balance in there. You can't just have all short. You can't just have all long. Uh, for the four to one, I kind of like just quarter notes. One, two, three, four, one, and hold the one out. I don't really like a short on the one. One, two, three, four, one. Eh, it's all right. Well, here's number two. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four, two, three, and four, and. I would say long and short work for both of those. Here's the and of four, the anticipation. One, two, three, and four, and. Whoops, sorry. One, two, three, and four, and. So probably long and short work for both of those as well. So that's number three, just anticipating. The and of four, that's a really good one as well. Here's another one of my favorites is going to be the and of four and the and of one. One, two, and three, and four, and. You know, I can't, I didn't really count that right. And one and, right? One, two, three, four, and one and. So my actual chord that the B flat seven, I'm actually playing on the upbeat of one. I'm not playing right on the downbeat of one, right? One, two, three, and four, and one and. You see that? So I'm playing on the upbeat. I'm playing the same chord on the upbeat of four and then switching actually. So I play my B flat seven on the upbeat of one. And again, we can use our tritone movement there as well. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. That's a cool thing to do because it's like a staggered. It's like, it's like, oh, right? It's, it's, it's off. And then if you come back with a four to one, that's a nice, you know, uh, juxtaposition of, you know, downbeats and upbeats. So you have an all upbeat comp, then you have an all downbeat comp. So here's what that would sound like. One, so one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one right? So kind of mixing and matching these different types of rhythms. The last one I'm going to talk about is going to be three comps in a row. You're going to have the and of four, the downbeat of one, and then one and, okay? So one, two, and three, and four, and one and. Now you don't have to, you can, as far as what harmonically to play, I added the tritone in, but you can do and one and. You can do with all of the same chord, right, of the chord that you're moving to. So one, two, three, four, and one, and. Doesn't sound quite as good in my opinion, um, but it works, especially maybe if you're comping in a different register or using a different t way of comping. Like doing something like that. One, two, three, four. Like that sounds much better than doing. That kind of sounds a little strange, right? So it's more kind of a hitty comp, like a big man comp, like da-da-da, right? Less of a, you know, you're not really, it's more, again, much more rhythmic punchy. So using that kind of first movement of your drop to B7 going into your B flat 7 here, you could do that as well, put the 13 on top, two, three, four, I love that, I love that, it's a really cool one, okay? So again, number one is four to one. Number two is three and four and, right? So three and four and. Number three is the and of four, just anticipation. Number four is and of four and and of one. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, right? You can also switch or you can play double the same chord. I wouldn't do long comps for that one. I wouldn't go one, two, three, four, and one. I'd probably make those short. It's going to sound best that way. And then the last one we had is the and of four, one, and the one and. One, two, three, four, and one and. Again, we, if we did this, that would sound cool too. So B7, right, to, to our B flat seven. I'm using some blues up here. So the minor third going to the one. 
that sounds really good as well. Okay. So work on these harmonic comps. And again, focus on targeting your rhythmic approach and practice to just thinking about what rhythms you are playing. Now, are there more rhythms than this? Yes, of course. But you want to start out with these. Start out with some basic rhythms. And then depending upon how advanced you are or if you're an intermediate player, you can kind of tweak these, right? So if you're a more advanced player, uh, you can still use the mental approach. The mental approach towards practicing the harmonic change applies to everybody. I mean, anyone can practice their harmonic approach no matter what level you are. I can practice this. Uh, you know, great, great players can practice this. It doesn't matter. It's just the the rhythmic uh, your rhythmic, you know, repertoire is going to be different. So as a beginner, you can use the examples I gave you, even an intermediate player, right? You can use those. I love using these as well. Uh, but if you're more advanced, just take the concept of focusing on your changes and really focus your rhythmic, uh, approach and practice around just what your, what rhythms you're going to play to make that harmonic change in a tune or the blues or whatever it may be. Okay. So again, just kind of to go over the house cleaning again, for everyone who kind of gave us a review, uh, over the last couple days. Um, and again, the winners, okay. Send your emails, uh, to info at jazzpianoschool.com. Okay. We're going to give out a free month to everyone who left a review and the solo piano essentials. Um, and the winners, whoever they are, right? Because I haven't picked them yet as I'm recording this, but you should have seen them in the beginning of the video. Uh, send your email to the info at jazzpianoschool.com. And uh, anyone interested in our lab launch, okay, which again will probably be coming, uh, if I had to say maybe end of October, early November, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash lab launch, okay, put your email address in. Um, you're just going to get an email saying, thank you, you are on the list. And then when we have more promotional uh, materials ready, um, as far as the options go, uh, you'll get that as well. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing, right? I'm really excited for this. Okay. So again, it's going to complement our main course curriculum very, very well. So we have a 600 video main course curriculum. The lab is going to be like the, uh, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's just gonna be great. I'm pumped. I'm excited. I'm excited because you can just get little bits of information just real quick. These really small upgrade formulas and be like, wow, you just like completely transformed one area of your playing, right? Like your comping or your voice leading or you know your your tune review, your tune analysis, right? How to play over spe specific progressions. That's uh, gonna be fantastic. I love it. I love this, guys. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, until next time. Um, Wait, did I have something I was going to do next week? Yes, you have a week until you can collect your free month. Okay, so just remember that you have up until next Friday, right? So um, next Friday is the last uh, point, and then we will no longer be giving out the free information. You have a week to collect your uh, review if you did leave a review. Okay, so again, thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you next week, and happy practicing.